Well, today I'm doing something a little bit different. The uh, synchronous motor valve has gone in this uh, valve, or in the, val the head of the valve anyway. So I've got one of these synchronous motor. So what happens is when that fails, it doesn't open the, uh, the flow of water. And then in this case, with underflow heating, the pump and the boiler lights will not activate. Obviously, I've, I've isolated it at the moment by turning it off at the fuse spur. <coughs> I'm now going to remove this uh, valve head. So it just clips on. There's basically two little um, recesses on the uh, brass uh, fitting. And this clips onto the, the valve. So you just push that down. And that should release it. There we go. So you'll see at the back when you push that, it releases this bit. So I'm going to put that there. This is a cupboard behind the couch, so it's never normally seen. So these are the two recesses. There's this bit here and that bit there. And then this bit clips on underneath here. So it basically just opens and closes this valve to allow the flow of water to go through the circuits. So I'm now going to undo this. So it'll be a case of undoing that screw there. It's a flat head in this case. Um, and then I'm going to replace the synchronous valve, uh, motor, synchronous motor. Okay, so that's the cover taken off. I've just kind of slightly splayed these bits out. So I'm going to undo that Phillips and undo that Phillips. And then you just basically follow the terminals down. I don't think it actually matters which way around they are. But um, anyway, one terminal's there, one terminal's there. So the first thing to do is to undo that one and undo that one. And then that will give me access to it. Okay, that's that one uh, removed. So here's the replacement one. Um, as you can see, that's the inside of it. It looks like there's been a bit of sort of water ingress or something into that. But uh, there's the two terminals. There's one terminal there and one terminal there. You'll see these two orange connectors or terminals, if you like. Uh, they basically just go onto each side in between the two of those. So, <clears throat> it's a bit of a guddle in here, but I'm not usually in this cupboard, so not a big deal. But anyway, that's the next step. I'll be putting that in. So, that then meshes. this. These teeth mesh with this. So, when you put the back plate on, make sure your uh, teeth mesh correctly with this. You might need to move the lever slightly to get it into place, but it's fairly straightforward. You should understand that. Right, so now it's about the reassembly. This cover plate, let's see, as you'll see, it locates with those two dowels there and there. And then that's the aperture for the motor to go through. Then <clears throat> this will go on top. Again, that's where the screws will go to hold the synchronous motor. But I need to connect, connect the terminals first, then put the motor in place and then screw it down first. Okay, so that's that Phillips screw tightened up in that one. <clears throat> now, to make sure that the teeth are actually aligned, push this. I don't know if you could hear that. And you see how it's going back? That's working fine. So it's, it is aligned. Now, the thing is, if you get a problem and your motor valve fails, synchronous motor fails, you can override it by pushing this lever up and then down into there to that position 
and that's like your sort of emergency override. <clears throat> so that's it actually open. So that's your, <clears throat> if, if you can't uh, get your heating on, put that thing up there, lock it into place and it should, uh, it should then open this valve and then everything else should start to function. But uh, now I need to put the cover back on and then put the, uh, the motor head onto the valve again. Then putting the cover back on is pretty straightforward. On this particular one, you just get the uh, the flat bit behind these tabs. Obviously, I'm doing this one-handed. It's not quite ideal. Make sure that's down, pivots down, and then it's a case of tightening up the screw. And that's that. You see that levers back to the normal position. It should it should take its time and uh, wind itself back. You should hear the motor turning if the gears are uh, properly aligned with the cogs. So I'm going to put this screw back together, tighten that one up, and then I'm going to fit it back onto the uh, the valve. Right, so that's it all reassembled. That's the bit that goes underneath there so just kind of line it up it seems to be on so you're going to locate those little nibs with those uh, parts of the brass fitting and that should be it, it's bloody hot that <clears throat> so that's that so as far as we're aware everything's going to be okay now so at the moment, nothing's calling for heat, so there's no requirement for it. But later on, <clears throat> when it gets cooler, some of these floor circuits will call for heat. And assuming that's working properly, the pump and the boiler light will come on and all will be normal. But as I say, if you've got an emergency situation, just push that lever up into this recess position. Bring it up push it that way and it should hold itself open and that should restore your heating if your synchronous valve synchronous motor valve has failed so don't shoot me I'm not a plumber but uh, that might help somebody out fairly straightforward if you need to buy a head you're probably talking about mm, probably 40 to 60 quid if you just need to buy a synchronous motor valve you're talking anywhere from say 10 pound to whatever you want but yeah the cheapest one will probably be at 10 12 pounds um, fairly straightforward I can't say these things last forever uh, in this particular part of the house uh, it's it's underfloor heating upstairs and downstairs I think I've this is the third one I think I've replaced in a house that's now 14 years old and downstairs, I think I've replaced the circuit um, once, I think. So, <clears throat> I think if you get three to four years out of one of these, that seems to be sort of average for me. Uh, maybe you get five. Maybe you get lifetime, I don't know. But uh, mm -hmm. they don't seem to last particularly long. So, this little bugger is something that you should become familiarised with. Uh, if you don't want to spend a fortune getting people out to fix your central heating. So anyway, please feel free to like and subscribe and hope you have a good weekend.